This is episode 236 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion Morales, and today I'm joined by Marcel, $200 times seven, Manzano. Way too much. <laughs> when you think about all the... Uh, okay, go. Spending virtual money and pretend money is fun. And then you realize, no, wait, I did that for real. Will, the sparkliest of pants, Hagwood. Hello, guys. How's it going? No explanation on, on the sparkle pants? They know. They know. <laughs> and Ryan, the castle is ready, I think. Stan Azuski. The room is prepared. The mural of a castle in a great wondrous fantasy land is ready for Ollie. Insert mythical themes here. Music. Imagine it. You got it, right? Yeah. Uh, There'll be a dragon head above his crib. (laughs) I love it. There's a plushy dragon head. It's going to be on the wall of his crib. (laughs) Awesome. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for listening to this episode of Gold Squadron Podcast. It's brought to you by our patrons, including those awesome Grand Admirals who sent me a... If you missed our our unboxing, uh, maybe I'll upload it as a separate video or something. But it essentially was a ton of dice. A ton of dice, including World's Dice, um, was amazing to see in the box, and I'm super excited to uh, to give those, that stuff away, or at least some of it. You have to watch the video to find out. <laughs> um, today, our focus, though, our focus today is on a on, on it's a holiday shopping edition. Kind of the, the idea that I threw out to the guys was if we had – we can kind of go one of two ways here. Um, we set it up for somebody who's never played the game before. A $200 budget for somebody who's never played the game before. They're just jumping in. So they need absolutely everything. But at the same time, you could also tweak it mentally for maybe there's a faction that you haven't bought into yet. And you can do that. Um, we're all going to kind of give you our our thoughts on each faction. We'll see how long that takes. We might have to split this up into a couple episodes. Um, and then also just have have some discourse back and forth. Maybe ask some questions why we went one, de- one direction or another. And also, we're going to uh, release after this episode this tool that I made. It's a very basic spreadsheet. But essentially, if you're trying to price out uh, you know, a faction. What is it that you want to do? We ha- have a basically an automatic calculator. You type in the your um, what you're gonna buy, and it 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 does the maths for you. But also, you could technically put your entire collection in here and then realize I've spent a lot of money. <laughs> well, this is by the old price. That that would be for the old pricing. This is the new pricing. So. Correct. This is true. This is true. Everything in here is the, is the updated pricing um, that we have, which actually um, I think we kind of wanted to start with that. That's something that we didn't um, we didn't get an opportunity to talk about it. I think we may, we glanced over it on an episode that we had a bunch of other things to do. And since today is all about buying things, let's go ahead and uh, and hit that first before we actually um, before we actually jump into our our buying guides today so let's go ahead and slide this on over so this was a press release that uh that asmode put out what's the date on this september 3rd september 3rd and basically saying across the board all the prices on everything up 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 from what it was um and that includes all asmode um library so they they specifically call out atomic mass games and fantasy flight uh games as well in here you click on this link that is very sneakily hidden in there it's uh it's you don't realize it's a hyperlink unless you really look for it and then they have this entire list and um so ryan i know i know you were the one who who brought it up as um as something that you wanted to talk about like go go ahead give me an angle here what is it that uh like what w- what do you want to talk about i'm going to go pull up the x-wing stuff specifically right now well i think it, we just got caught up recently in i mean in in no fault uh on anyone just 
all the rules changes. Obviously, we've had a ton of great events being held for the GSP Galaxies uh, qualifiers in the finals. So uh, this this kind of got not pushed under the rug, but kind of got swept over just a little bit because there's so much more other news. But it is worth noting that, yes, the prices are increasing, not just for X-Wing, almost across the board for a lot of Asmodee product. And we're seeing it in a lot of things in everyday life. Uh, a lot of things are going up slightly, 10, 15%-ish, depending on the product, just because shipping, getting things across uh, seas, uh, production, everything across the board is costing a little more these days, both because of our the COVID-19 pandemic that we're all still trying to get through and likely as well for some of the companies that are realizing that a lot of people want to be paid living wages. So they have to compensate that by uh, maybe increasing some of their production costs or shipping costs, whatever it is across the board. We're seeing it in X-Wing. Um, this may feel bad for some people. And you know, if this is your only miniatures game you've ever seen, it's understandable. And it's understandable even if this is your 10th miniatures game, right? Price increases, they don't feel great on the cons on our end, right? We uh -huh. enjoy the game. We don't want to have to spend a lot more on it if we don't have to. But uh, luckily, X-Wing is one of the cheaper miniature games out there. And I think this is the first... For, well, besides going from first edition to second edition, we saw the average price increase from a small base higher so i think it was like 15 bucks for a small base and it became 20 and then now this is the second ever price update to where we're seeing a, a small base go from 20 basically 19.99 to 23.99 so not as much of an increase but it's still an increase um and every other you know size pack is equivalent in some aspect in their increase some maybe a little more than others but it's averaging about 10 to 15 percent more um yeah so just be aware you know don't be mad at your local store that they they don't set the price yeah it's very it's very true you can and you can see here um of course you know this is this is ms you know we're, we're comparing the what they they list as current price this is actually let's go ahead and update this this is past versus what is now the current msrp so this is this is chain essentially they're they're putting out the manufacturer's suggested retail price but that also means that their wholesale prices have gone up right they were only talking about msrp because that's what's public facing so the idea here being that across the board it's now costing your game store more money to bring in these ships and thusly it's going to cost you and this could look a di couple of different ways right because i know like for instance like some stores maybe already did discounts of some kind those discounts may go away or may uh you might end up paying your past like the past msrp if you had a place that kind of constantly uh discounted for some reason maybe they bought in bulk um or maybe just overall the price goes up but yeah I, I find it really really interesting to see um you know what 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 is here <laughs> oh, okay um sorry i was reading something but that looking looking at this um you can obviously see i find it interesting that they still have the um some of the first edition stuff is also listed on here do you think is, is that stuff still buyable by suppliers do you think like this is stuff that are, is still available for stores to like pick up probably yes but also um it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it, it's it's some it's it's like uh when you're selling something that's out of date and it's coming out of date in a week you know at the grocery store they'll, they'll like to, to they'll mark it off so it, i'm surprised that they that they made an increase on stuff that's already essentially expired i mean it's mm -hmm. it's expired things and so that that's a surprise but i think it's mostly what they did is they took um uh what it looks like they did it looks like they took whatever their price was put a 20 percent increase which is actually kind of high to be i mean i know everybody's getting hit but a 20 percent increase across the board is pretty significant i mean even um you know 
in most you know in most in the industries the price increase was somewhere in the five to ten percent i know where i work we did a, a five percent increase across the board so increases are normal 20 percent is is a lot but uh it looks like they did a 20 percent increase and then rounded up to the nearest you know 99 cents or something like that there you go <laughs> but doing that on oh actually a couple of those are 25 percent so yeah, that that's that's a pretty significant increase. Um, and doing that on products that that are already past due is just uh, or, or already not playable is a um, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna. I mean, obviously, I don't like it as a consumer, um, mm -hmm. but you know, only only they know what is in their in their margins so mm -hmm. you know can't can't speak whether it's just as a consumer i don't like it as a as a mass consumer i don't like it i mean i've got two huge boxes there <laughs> that, are, that probably have like two or three thousand dollars worth of of x-wing stuff in it so from that regard i don't like it but again i don't know what's in their margins i don't know what's in their p l so you know I'm sure they're not doing it because they just want to line their pockets. I'm sure they, they, they've, they've got a cover. Yeah. And I think this is, this is another reason, another driving force. Why, when I started putting together this, uh, winter 2021, um, buying guide that we, we, we are using MSRP prices. I, I want to kind of start with that in mind. We're going to be using the current hash kind of new uh updated pricing for it but i think it's also important to note that you can find deals where you can uh some stores might have things on sale because if they bought it at the past price but they're trying to liquidate for instance first edition stuff you might find it uh, but i will say that in our buying guides we are using uh only second edition stuff because the idea is somebody walking in, they are most likely going to be able to find that first edition stuff. We are at the moment for today's, the purposes of today is somebody who just has access to basically things in the black box. Um, and that's it for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, so we know that you guys can find deals. That is that's awesome. The idea here is somebody who's going uh, to their friendly local game store. This is kind of your – the most you should be paying. How about that? Don't pay more than this price. That would be the cool – like the uh, – if we made this a separate video, don't pay more than this much money for this faction. You know, some clickbaity, clickbaity thing. But um, <laughs> anything else we want to talk about when it comes to the price increases before we dive in to spending other people's money? Um, I would say, because I I did experience this just is either just before COVID or just as the stores were coming back in. Is when you get someone who's interested in the game, or if you get someone who just walked over and just kind of doing that look, they're 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 doing that the lean look. You know what that looks like? They're looking over the table. They want to see what's interested. Please, for the love of X Wing, talk to them. <laughs> I'm not even joking. The amount of times, and I, I've done in the past, like I've watched that person walk by, look, I'm still looking at my dial, do my planning phase. I probably look way too serious to that person. Like turn, acknowledge that person, say, how's it going? Have you seen this game before? And off you go. Like I was able to walk that person, the first person I did that to walk him over they're like, I like Mandalorians and clones. And I went, you can go this, 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 and this. I pretty much gave him a shopping list almost in that point and told him about how cheap X-Wing was. This is the Discord of our local group you can join so you know when to show up at the times we're going to be in. Just take like the 15 minutes to say hi, see if they're interested, talk about how much fun it is and what's going on on the table, and it'll just blossom from there, hopefully. That's right. That's right. And and even like we've had definitely people at past times when they when they come by and they're looking, even if they don't buy in at that moment, 
you you create a positive experience for that person, right? They 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 remember, and if they come back that second time, you greet them again. All of a sudden, you're you're building credibility with this person, even in small contact points. It really can make an absolutely bigger, uh, absolutely big difference um, when it comes to getting more players in the game because that's what we want. You want to develop more people to crush you because that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave them lean looking. That's right. <laughs> huh? 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 Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, it is it is time for us to begin uh, spending other people's money. Okay. Now, uh, Will, I'm going to give you give you the call, my friend. Is there a faction that you want to start with? What is what faction tickles your heart, and then we can all go through our. Uh, that faction uh let's start with the rebels because uh, they are one of the two factions that i think gets uh the easiest start so i think we will begin there okay let's go ahead we'll start with rebels now the one thing that we're doing is we're setting a budget of 200 ish dollars 200 ish dollars uh as a way just to get in the game now of course remember for these new players you can actually if they're in your community um uh, you can actually significantly lower the cost for them by if you have an extra damage deck extra templates basically those starting components you can save them a ton of money to get started you could save them anywhere from 45 to 60 bucks just that part but no requirement there but just to kind of keep that in mind if you want that flexibility all right let's go ahead uh, let's go ahead and hit it so what did you think a um a beginner rebel player first time should be hooking themselves up with will oh wait i might make the last second oh decision. a flex i had i have to know okay i had to, I had to change it the last second all right uh a uh, rip uh to the y wing sorry we're going x wing heavy <laughs> uh, it was uh it's for a pilot i have uh, i have like lissa in mind i guess okay mm -hmm. so what i was saying was the uh the rebels and empire are actually the easiest factions to get into in my opinion uh because of the core set pretty pretty standard um connection there because the course that includes two tie fighters and uh an x-wing right off the bat uh and all the things you need um that's uh, an excellent starting point if you're uh, especially if you're going with rebels and uh and or empire so in my buying guide i'm actually taking two core sets uh so that way uh not only will you have stuff for yourself but you get all uh, six dice on each side. You get two damage decks, two templates. So that way, if you're playing at home, you always have something to share. Uh, then I'm reaching. So that's going to give you two X-wings right off the bat. But that doesn't. In that only includes like Luke and Biggs. Uh, you don't get uh, Jack Porkins and or no, Jack Porkins might be in the core set. Yeah, he's in the core set. You don't get Garvin Dreyas. Uh, and Wedge and Tilly's. So I'm actually reaching out for a third X-Wing. Just, I mean, game's called X-Wing, so I'll keep it on, on theme there. But because I am recommending Phoenix Cell as well, oh uh, man, the interaction between Hera and Garvin is just so good. Uh, too hard to pass up. Uh, or Wedge as well, if you're rocking like the B-Wing Hera. Uh, so good. So I'm getting a Phoenix Cell Squadron pack. Uh, so right now I'm up to three X-Wings, a B-Wing, and two A-Wings. And I'm throwing in, uh, same thing, I, I want more pilots. I want uh, Jake and Arvel uh, for A-Wings. So I'm actually including the third A-Wing in there uh, to round out it. Now I went a little bit over, that's two... Oh three ninety five. I went. Is what it's it's shown. okay. I'm I'm going over a few times too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I hit close enough. We can go under, uh, 
but this is this is what works out. I am sad. I originally had a, a Y wing in there, so that mm -hmm. way you can get uh, one of each um, ship, I guess, like one of each small base ship in there. But yeah, I think for uh, unless the Y wing calls to you, I mean, you can really slot in anything else. I would definitely take the the Phoenix and the the extra A wing. So that way you got three A-wings and you start doing like smaller swarms with the rebels. But uh you can probably swap out that that last pack for for flavor, whether you want the B wing, the X Wing, or the Y Wing. I like it. I like it. Now here's a question. Um Ryan or Marcel, did either of you do a double core set as well? No. no. All, all right. So we'll 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 I'm see. For me. <laughs> they can buy their own corset. Yeah, I'm assuming the other person's got it taken care of. Right. Okay. Cool. Well, cool. Cool. I mean, for kitchen tables and stuff, you know, get, get the family involved. We well, that means there, there's there's two hundred dollars per kid, right? So now it's four hundred. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad future parent. I already yeah. <laughs> you're, you're gonna be a great single uh, child parent. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> Your math checks out on that. All righty. Um, so here, Ryan, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and have you go next with uh, with your rebel suggestions. Uh, so I decided. So Corset Phoenix Cell, I think, are the baseline. Like, this is what you want. Um, after that, I think it is. Uh, I, I was like, all right, I want some small ships, but. After I get all those in, like, let's take care of one of the bigger price things. You, you get the Falcon, right? Han, Lando, Chewie, Le well, not Leia yet. Uh, we don't have that upgrade pack, uh, at least in this set. Um, but you get the Falcon. You get your big base, your iconic Rebel Falcon. Um, and then um, didn't have uh, the rest of the way. I wanted to get the Y-Wing in there because you already have A-Wings. You got B-Wings in the Phoenix cell. If... The, if the person's interested more in the pilots available for that ship, they could pick up that extra A-wing pack or that extra B-wing pack if they're interested. Which are both very viable, but I'd want to get a person in the availability of each as many chassis as I can while providing as much value with the packs. Um, I only added in the extra X-wing because there are plenty of pilots in there that double up or not double up, but fill in some gaps that aren't in the core set. I believe one of those is Wedge, is the big one. Um, mm -hmm. I think Thane, Kyrell as well. Um, I, it's been a long time since I looked at the pack comparisons between the core set and the regular X-Wing, but um, X-Wing is one of the most iconic ships in the Rebel Alliance, so having both of the car pilot cards taken care of at the beginning sounds like a really good start and gives the player... Y wing to play with, and then yeah, if they want to delve more into the A and B, that'd probably be next. All righty, Marcel, what you got? So mine is uh, similar. Um, you got to scroll left, yeah. So mine is similar to Ryan's, and I think it's identical to yours, Dale. Oh. Um, so we, we can just probably talk about it together here since um, I think we got the same. So similar, the only difference is, like William, I went with a... What are you doing? It's not Lando's Falcon. It's just the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. currently you have the Scum Falcon. Got it's it. the same okay. It's the same price. But sorry. Autopilot. Sorry, it's in the brain. Um, the so uh, here... Yeah, so similar to what you had... Um, I mean, and like William said, get that other RZ one. Uh, even though you already have two of them in the Phoenix Cell Squadron, just Jake and Arvel mm -hmm. are, are 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 so good. Especially Jake is so good that you need to have them. And even for a new player, I think Jake is probably one of the best pilots for learning how to fly because uh, you can use them to arc dodge and play that AC game with the proton rocket, but you can also use him as a support ship. So um, a little bit different than Hera because Hera doesn't, Hera has a range two bubble. So you can fly Hera a little bit more loosely and not be pointing in a specific way. But in order to fly, get the benefit out of Jake, being able to complete a boost or a barrel roll within range one of a friendly ship is such a 
such a good skill for any new player to learn. So I would say that's probably the number one ship I would take uh, in all of X-Wing for somebody that's learning how to play because it just teaches you so many things. And it's so hard to do it wrong, but it's so fun to try. Um, Millennium Falcon, because it's the Millennium Falcon. You play an X-Wing, you want to play X-Wings, you want to play A-Wings, you want to play uh, Han, Chewie, you know, Lando. You want those uh-huh. those things on there. And the Phoenix L Squadron, just because of the um, the uh, the not just because of Hera, because Hera's good, because Wedge and all those other fun things. It's just because it, those packs are just such a bargain, especially now when you're looking at twenty four dollars per small base. If you buy three of them, that's seventy two dollars, I believe. So you're looking at seventy two dollars for three ships. Where when you when you're looking at the packs, uh the core set is $48 for three ships and the cell squadron or some of the other packs that we'll talk about later is $60 for three ships. So you're saving about $13 in the cell, in the cell squadron for, uh, on, on the three ships and you're so you're basically getting a free ship, you know, quote unquote with the second edition core set. And as we'll see later on, you're also getting all of the, all of the other, shenanigans like the templates and the cards and dice and all the other stuff that adds up without giving you any extra ships what about you dion same 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 yeah uh your reasoning yeah i mean we had that we had the exact same exact same idea uh for the same reasons you know one set of dice is not ideal like i'm gonna focus on maybe some differences right ideally you would have at least six because that's the man the max for for each one um but i figured i would rather if this person had two hundred dollars ish to spend that they uh they would go for a, a well-rounded squad right you end up here with uh two t65s you end up with three a wings and uh and that falcon that's very nice if i could tack on like what's what's that next purchase that's where i start leaning probably to go like to start diversifying maybe you go for a y wing um if the hawk was available for rebels i would say hawk i wouldn't even hesitate but it's not yet maybe if you're watching this later on if the hawk is available as a single pack get that now okay that would probably replace something in my list to be completely honest uh, the hawk is a pretty cool platform uh but yeah i'm right with you marcel uh, agree on all uh, on all points all right ryan choose what faction do you want to hit first uh separatists why not let's pick a different era let's go on the other end of the spectrum no core sets allowed so i think in in every single faction uh that doesn't have not part of the core set i started with obstacle pack third party templates and range rulers they're corresponding faction damage deck and a dice pack yep so that's like standardized across the board for all the other factions minus rebel and empire so after that um i went the route of again this is very i'm very biased but like when i think separatists i think droids lots of them I'm right with this you. can be tweaked yeah. if you prefer the big ships or the singular ships like the Infiltrator or Django Fett. Because arguably, Django Fett Slave won in most in a competitive mindset you would want in the list. But a lot of the things didn't really work out to where I wanted to get a variety for the player available. So, at minimum, Servants of Strife. It's the, the ideal starter pack meant for the Separatists. Um, a singular Vulture Droid. To make sure you have uh, the separate one, cool different paint uh, scheme, and on top of that gets you Discord missiles, which are very valuable for a lot of people who run droids. Single hyena, single HMP, single HMP, and single droid tri fighter. Um, just looking for variety, um, not overreaching too much into one specific type of ship minus the vulture because you'll have three of them. But a lot of separatists do incorporate three or definitely more vultures in a singular list 
Um, if you were to try and fit in a slave one, you're pretty much swapping a slave one for almost two whole small base ships with the allotted price available. So I figured, well, let's see if they like the droid mindset. If that's what they want to go with. If they want to swap some things out and get the info, because arguably the infiltrator's got a lot of singular upgrade cards that are really good. And obviously, Django Fett Slave 1 is Django Fett Slave 1. Django and Zam, both really good. But um, it, it, it is, Severus is a very flavor to taste. It depends on who you're marketing this for, basically, or, or who's buying it. What do they want? I, I went with, if I was going for droids, I'd want to get the most variety as I can, all the droids possible to start with, and then go out from. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just piggyback right off the right off the bat. So I'm a very, very similar mindset in what I was choosing for Separatists as well, Ryan. Um, I didn't go the Slave 1 pack either. I also went Droid Heavy because um, my thought is somebody – Somebody who's looking at separatists to for the first time is likely um, kind of is is more exploring the idea of droids rather than uh, I just want to buy more fire sprays. All right. Um, so for myself, I'll go ahead and pull up mine. I know this is uh, a little crazy for y'all watching at home, me moving all these windows around. But for for myself. I went uh, the same same place you were, starting with those third party templates. And when we say third party templates, the, you know, I just kind of took the average price from from a bunch. Obviously, we have different people who we work with, but this is just kind of your generic price. Almost all third party people have priced their uh, acrylic templates underneath the MSRP of the movement, uh, the official movement templates. I'm forgetting what they're what they're called move tools well, i'm not sure what they call it but um but for myself i went servants of strife and i went two vultures and then two hmps it's a little more simplistic but my my thought here was to really go for that swarm feel right away but at the same time, you at least are able to have those HMPs as an option to be able to flex flex a couple things around. And if you wanted a you know a block of vultures um, out there, the vulture class uh, fighters, you have that as an option. My one regret is not having independent calculations available for this person. Um, I'd probably reach for a tri fighter next. Um, but this was kind of my compromise of getting that flavor of the droids and, and, and avoiding avoiding the fire spray. Where are you at, Will? Don't forget to unmute yourself, my bearded friend. Oh, I got lost in my I got lost in my cells. Anyways. <laughs> so I I'm still going with the core set. There's not, uh, for my calculations, it's like, what, a $2 difference, uh -huh. I think. So I'm just going core set for simplicity and, and to give it a little bit of variety here. So um, plus it would give you some extra factions, right, for like some skirmishes. If you want to go like, uh, like a three uh, man fight, I uh, give some other options there. Um, but I'm just reaching for variety. Uh, I got the Hyena. I got the HMP. I got the Tri-Fighter. I even have a Nantex in there. And then the Servants of Strife. So you get two Vultures and then one of each other small base ship. And I even get enough to throw in the extra dice pack then. Uh, so you still get the six dice and then you get the largest variety of possible. Um, I'm not sure what the, uh, this one's kind of weird to me. It's Separatist, I think is the weirdest faction to start buying uh, because it's, uh, the lists are so, what do I wanna say? Cohesive might be the best word mm -hmm. that like, normally you're flying, you know, uh, we see in like, uh, very specific, like three HMPs and Grievous, or uh, 
something like a uh, seer and seven vultures right um but i think the uh what do i want to say i think that uh that's hard to predict where the separatist player wants to go um so this this will give them a lot of testing grounds to find out what avenue uh they really want to dive down into uh do they do they feel like meh about HMPs? They're like, oh, I don't know about flying multiples of these. Uh, and that will kind of uh, let them know. Though I do regret, I'll see, I, I assume you guys probably have it, but I do regret not putting the fire spray on there. Uh, thinking of separatist archetypes, the fire spray grievous plus one archetype. Mm -hmm. I feel is so so strong uh, that uh, that's that's my only uh, what do I want to say disappointment that you don't get that kind of setup with it. So, uh, but it gives uh, this way it gives you the most variety, it gives the most small ships uh, for your buck because uh, you get a whole bunch of them essentially. Right. All right, and now Marcel, Marcel in the chat said that we're failing at separatists. So let's see, let's see what he did. Yeah, because none of you took the Django fire spray. I mean, that's kind of a must at this point when you're flying separatist. Now, I did cheat a little in order to get under two hundred dollars. Wow! Uh, and I only cheated in this one. I didn't cheat in the other ones, but I took that twenty-two dollar um, acrylic template. And I'm just going to go with a used eBay cardboard template set that you can get for like <laughs> seven or eight bucks on eBay. Um, <laughs> hey, you can get it. It's, it's, it they're they're You're cardboard. Right. People bought their, you know, people bought their templates or they won their templates and they're like, I don't need this cardboard anymore. You can find them anywhere from seven to 10 bucks on eBay, including the obstacles, but the obstacles are probably a little bit harder to find. Plus you want the variety. So the obstacle pack does make sense. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so that's how I was able to save the $13 to able to fit the fire spray in there. So I've got the, uh, fire, fire spray, very necessary. Then I got the, uh, servants of strife, which gives you the, uh, the three ships, the two droids plus the, um, plus the grievous essentially, uh, mm -hmm. a third droid, droid fighter. Mm -hmm. And then instead of going with the HMP or the Nantex, I actually went with the second uh, Hyena Bomber because one Hyena Bomber, I, I mean, the, these ships move so unique and so different from each other that, like William was saying, you can't really mix and mash them too well unless you're flying like a three-ship list because they just move at different speeds. They have weird blue maneuvers. So you want, I mean, the droids just want you to fly in some type of, formation or just want they, they, they need to do that so with two bombers so this way you can do two bombers three droids and grievous uh for a nice six ship list or you can do Django with three drones and a hyena i mean there's there's a lot of things that you can you can mix match right here but uh but again uh i don't think that it makes sense if you're gonna if you like hyena uh, hyenas better by two hyenas if you like HMP better by by two HMPs but I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to just buy or or same thing with the tri fighters I don't think it makes sense to buy one of each in this because you need uh, they, uh, with the with the drones they need to fly I think in three and then the HMPs the hyenas or the tri fighters need to fly at the very minimum in, in twos because if you're splitting it up any other way, they just, you know, the network calculations and all the other stuff just kind of, kind of falls apart. And I win. I feel very <laughs> confident that I won the separatist. <laughs> well, you you may have competitive separatist it, but I this is new player. I always have in mind. Yeah, Problem but even the new player like, think, tries things out. Yeah, you're probably right. But the um. Even with a new player, like trying to get the HMPs to side swipe or side sloop or whatever they call the thing, and then mix and mashing the way the Nantex fly and the Tri Fighter, they're, they're just going to give themselves a headache anyway. Uh, 
<laughs> All right. Well, I think let's go ahead and let's transition to the Republic, Marcel. All right. So you guys, is that mine up there? Yeah. All right. So in this one, I did not cheat. I actually bought the uh, curl paw templates, as you should, if you're not cheating. And so G- I guess you said it. GSP twenty twenty one for fifteen percent off. By the way, but anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, so you got the obstacle pack, the templates, the damage deck, and the dice pack. That's fifty six dollars, by the way. Uh, for those doing the math, so the Guardians of the Republic is uh, the uh, the two uh, V 19s plus the Delta Seven. Then. I went with an extra Delta 7. So you have two Delta 7s, two V19s, one Eta Actis uh, Starfighter, one Naboo Starfighter, and one Nimbus class. Um, did not go with any medium base. If you wanted a lat or something like that, just go ahead and cheat your way to eBay um, and, and find a way to save 12 bucks. But... Um, same thing with the arc. You know, you can also do that with the arc if you. I think the arc you could probably replace. If you wanted to go the cheat route, you could probably replace that Nimbus class with an arc, and that'd be a good a good trade. But I do think two Delta Sevens make sense. Uh, the V 19s probably who cares about them? But they are a steal at forty eight bucks, and then the Naboo and the you, you have to have an at a. You just can't not have Yoda and Anakin and Obi. And in none, not a single one of my seven factions, I can guarantee you I picked a Y-Wing. So no Y-Wings anyway. (laughs) Not allowed. Not in my house. (laughs) All right, Ryan, you want to follow that up? Yeah, I got. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Uh, it happened. It happened to me as well. <laughs> I I just I just made a new one. I made a whole new column for it. We got this. We got this. Enhance one one moment as we excel better. Oh come on! Jeez, <laughs> Louise. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we got this. We got this. We'll just make it absolutely massive first. All right. There we go. Hit it, Will. I think this... I'm sorry, Ryan. Yeah, I think this is yours. One second. They're, they were saying they can't hear Ryan. Can they hear him now? I was seeing the chat. Well, give me give me one more time, Ryan. They say I'm muted. No, uh, you're good. You're good now. I think I think I accidentally scrolled your your volume. All right, you should be good now. All right, let's hope. Because yep. All right, chat says I'm good. All right, cool. Obstacles pack, third party pack, dice pack, and the Galactic Republic damage deck to start off the Republic. Similar to the Separatist, we have their equivalent starter pack being the Guardians of the Republic. Um, And similar to the Rebel Alliance, I guess, and the Separatist, I guess, too. It's hard not to get uh, more of the uh, pilots of one of the ships in their squad packs being the Delta-7 Aether Sprite. Um, Anakin, Mace Windu, Luminara, Barris Offee. I think because in the main pack it's Obi, Plo, and Ahsoka. Maybe I have a couple of those mixed up. Maybe Mace is in the big one and Ahsoka is with Anakin. Either way, you want to get all those Jedi. Jedi are really good. Um, and then uh, I want to, as well, speaking of Jedi, are really good. Every, a lot of people really like the ETA too. The Jedi Interceptor. Grab one of those. Um, you already have two torrents in the Guardians of the Republic pack, so that's kind of covered. And I wasn't really sure where to go from here because I, I originally I was like, all right, let's throw in an Arc 170. But if I threw an Arc 170, I didn't have enough money left to get another small ship. I said, all right, we have two small base ships to go with. So we'll put in the V-Wing, which was my first option. 
And then filling out the last one, pretty much the only other small base ship available uh, was the Y-Wing. So I have the Y-Wing in there. Like I said, um, I'm not in for planetary defense forces in my clone army. So uh, if if the person does like having and they like the design of the Naboo N1 Starfighter, that's an easy swap to take the Y-Wing out if they did so desire. But I think the V-Wing is a nice small addition um, for a small base ship. I would take the V over the Y if they wanted to put the N1 Naboo Starfighter in for one of those two. All right, all right. Uh, so uh, you you and I, um, Ryan, went really, really similar. The only The only difference here is I felt like I had to cheat. I felt like I had to cheat and overspend slightly or just actually have money left over. So instead of taking the Y-Wing, I took the lat and I ended up with $188. So Let I was like, well, introduce you to eBay. Well, well yeah. You're legal so, again. <laughs> so, so that does put me over budget at 212. All right. Maybe you were really good and Santa wants to bring you some a little extra. Okay. But if not, then, Hey, you save money at $188 uh, and 19 cents by taking that lat and uh, you still get a bunch of bunch of Jedi and uh, and some cool stuff there. Now, uh, Will, what, what what was your take? What what did you would you change up here? All right. So uh, once again, I'm I'm for simplicity's sake, uh, I'm I'm just taking the corset uh, that way. If you are, this would be if you are just like shopping for someone, uh, you don't have to check down uh, that extra stuff. Um, but I, of course, am reaching for the Guardians of the Republic, a must have for the faction. And then I 100% agree as well. The, the first purchase you should make after that Guardians is the second Aether Sprite. Uh, the, the extra Jedi you get, being able to run that, just starting the faction with two Jedi, two Torrents, is I think the best place to expand from that. Uh, so after that, I'm um, reaching for an ARC-170. It's so iconic, in my opinion, uh, for, from the, uh, the movies and the TV shows that uh, I want an ARC in there. Uh, then uh, this person was able to track down not one, but two Adas. Uh, the, the combinations of... Uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan, plus you get those beautiful hyperspace rings as well, uh, is just a, just a cool piece to put onto the board. Uh, I think it, and, and then they have a similar, definitely not price point, but they have a similar style uh, in list building for, uh, uh, for swapping out for the Aether Sprites, right? You just throw in an Ada. Uh, as well uh, so ends up being uh, two Adas, two aether sprites uh two torrents and then a, an arc 170 uh, to round out uh a little over budget uh at 203.94 all right so now now i want to flip to the empire okay and can i say I had the hardest – I think out of all the factions, for me, Empire was the hardest. Um, and I think that has to partially do with my outlook on on Empire right now, okay? Just just like th they're having a little bit of a tough time after looking at what happened at Galaxies. And, um, and I think that may have – that that's probably reflected in my opinion on this buying guide uh but we'll we'll hit it anyway first i ended up going over budget sue me i did it again okay <laughs> we're at 215 dollars, and you could lose a ship along the way if you got to stay under that 200 dollar mark uh so corset it, it's it's a given you get two tie fighters um and you also get the inferno squadron pilots in that core set they do not come in the the separate tie fighters if you want the infernal squadron you gotta get 
the the core set there. Then I also went with the the squadron pack that Acad- uh, Sky Strike Academy. One thing that we hadn't mentioned is that the um, the squadron packs also, just like the core set, bring a ton of extra upgrade cards a lot of those generic upgrades as well as some of the things that are in a lot of the uh, the conversion kits as well um you'll notice one thing we haven't done and i think it's mostly due to budget and what the msrp of those those uh, conversion kits are we haven't touched the conversion kit yet i'm not sure if they'll pop up maybe they will maybe they won't i know i didn't use them as at all but i did note before i get to my list that Empire, I think out of all of them, makes the strongest case for the conversion kit, in my opinion, uh, due to things like Palpatine being in the... Um, Gunboats, right? Right. Yes, gunboats when they become available. Uh, and there's a lot of really cool pilots and ships that you get access to from that conversion kit, but then you would need to go track down those used ships from first edition. But anyway... We got the Sky Strike Academy next to that core set. After that, I went uh, kind of a mixed bag. Inquisitor's tie, because we all know the Grand Inquisitor is really good. The individual ones, uh, Fifth Brother, Seventh Sister. Uh, uh, basically, any pilot in that ship is going to be defensive and awesome. After that, you got the tie interceptor. I could not, I could not, not include the Ace of Legends Sunterfell. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. You got to bring yourself a Sunterfell. TIE X1, because classic, iconic Vader ship, uh, advanced targeting computer, you feel real powerful with that. Let's actually roll real quick back to the Sky Strike Academy. You, of course, get Defender Vader in there. Um, he's like him and the Delta Squadron pilot are the ones worth flying. You, you get everything you need there. Um, the Rexler could be good, but he's not available unless you get the, the separate defender pack and i think at a 200 dollars budget just not worth it yet and then to round it out i wanted some type of support ship so i went and hoped that you could find a tie reaper which supposedly there are whispers that those are getting repackaged into a black box again at first it wasn't happening now it is maybe by the time you know somebody in the future is watching this uh those are available again or you might be able to find uh, them in stock at a at a local game store, but that is technically considered a second edition product, uh, even though it has first edition things that go directly into the recycle bin. Uh, so that's my suggestion: Corset, Sky Strike, Inquisitor's Tie, Tie in, uh, Interceptor, Tie X One, and a Tie Reaper Pack. Over budget at two fifteen. If you have to drop something. Um, Pick one of the small base ships, probably, um, and flavor to taste there. Or you replace the TIE Reaper with maybe another Inquisitor's TIE. I don't want to. I don't want to lose the Reaper. But if you had to stay under the budget, that's how I do it. All right. Who wants next on an Empire? I'll go. Because I am excited about the Empire right now. I am having so much fun with it. I'm not going to say what I'm flying. Uh, you guys have seen it on on our Discord. Maybe you guys have seen it. I shared it on our Discord. I don't know if you guys actually clicked through it. But, um, yeah, I'm flying that at the Lima Open next month. And then I wish I would have flown it at Alderaan. I'm, so, I'm having so much fun with that list. Uh, Ryan would approve. Um <laughs> Ryan's the, eyebrows. Uh, mm. He's like, I would. Yeah, it's, it's very weird being on the same page as list, list building as Marcel. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you would one hundred percent approve of this list. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but anyway, you'll, if you haven't seen it, I shared it on Discord with you. And for those other people, I'm gonna have some fun at your expense. So I have a second edition course set. Um, coming in, so no eBay cheating this time. It's a nice little core set. So that gives you the TIE Fighter, two TIE Fighters, and a TIE Interceptor, I believe, right? Is that the core set? Accurate? Yeah. No, two oh, TIE no, Fighters and an X Wing. Two TIE Fighters and X Wing. Yeah, the X Wing yeah. is just a decoration piece, I guess. Um, so I did take a, after that, the Sky Strikers Academy, Squ- uh, Academy Squadron, because you get the two TIE Interceptors plus the Defender. Vader Defender, uh, and then you get some fun 
Sienery and some other fun um, so interceptors. I took an extra tight interceptor because you need the Sunterfell in there. You cannot have an Empire Squadron without Sunterfell. Then Inquisitor's Tie. Uh, actually, this I thought this was the easiest one to do. You, Dion, you said you you struggled with this I, one. I had tr- I had me, trouble staying under the budget, man. I I I, uh, yeah. I just. If I'm thinking about a brand new player, I didn't mm-hmm. want to stack them with too many of one ship, but I still ended up giving them three tie interceptors. I just I, yeah, I feel like too. Empire Empire's known for having variety in their squads or a tie swarm. Like that's been a, yeah, but, a, a lot uh, or swarming. Also, also th- thematically, Empire had a lot of money, so you know you, you wanted to use that money. Yeah, that's right. You've got <laughs> you you've got I mean you got two tie fighters. You've got three tie interceptors, and then you still have room for you know you still got a defender with Vader defender or some other stuff, and then you still got room for the, a tie striker just because there's so much fun uh, to fly, especially if you only got one, then you can fly Duchess or something like that, um, and then you got the X one so you can get Vader in there, and then you also got the Inquisitor's tie so you can get Grand Admiral. I think that out of all the factions this was probably the easiest one for for me personally to say like oh this these are the like i can make a full squadron with these and you don't need any large base ships uh the corset gives you two of them already so um to me it was just the easiest one to say like yeah this is what i need i need two tie fighters three interceptors a defender an x1 a v1 and the tie striker it's pretty straightforward pretty easy and um yeah it's just good two of those ships are in the secret squad <laughs> all right uh what what about you will all right check your check your camera dm uh while i'm breaking this uh my buying guide down I have reached for, uh, I don't know, man, I must not like Inferno or something, because uh, I am skipping the Inferno and Scratcher, and I'm actually reaching for two core sets. Uh, I think it's another another faction that uh, when you when you can, uh, you think you got to reach for uh, another core set. Get you the extra dice, templates, damage jack, everything that you can play, two players at home, I think is such a good value uh, for a beginning player who is needing all of those like asteroids and uh, tokens and all that stuff. So I uh, started off there, which gives the Empire four TIE Fighters to begin with, uh, which I think is a great... Uh, I We don't have mini swarms back in or, uh, these days. Um, I guess that that one Sumtier brute uh, had a mini swarm with it. I guess uh, that we saw on stream, but for the most part, I think it's a a dying archetype. Um, I'm not sure why, because uh, four Tie Fighters, 88 points, super uh, affordable as far as putting them on the board. Uh, so that's that's the base. There, it's just four Tie Fighters. You can fill out any squad with them. And then I'm hitting the uh, the individual ships. Then with, of course, you man. If you don't have the X one and Inquisitor's tie, uh, I don't know what you're doing uh, in Empire. Those the <laughs> Vader and Grand are just so good. Uh, those chassis are just man, unbelievable. Uh, I, I really like the X one. I it might be man, it's up there. It's probably my favorite Empire ship, uh, the Tie X one uh, on X wing. Like in in the game, uh, it's just so powerful. Uh, nothing else hits like it in the Empire. Uh, and then, like I said, Inquisitor's Tie, and I'm rocking uh, a single interceptor as well. Got to have that soon tier. So good. Uh, such value uh, you get out of that expansion, even if it is one pilot. You actually could do a surprising line. Grab an Alpha uh, grab, uh, with along with your Academy pilots. Uh, you could really sneak that in uh, as a filler ship as well. Uh, then I'm reaching for the Striker. Uh, the 
and the thought process here is they actually have uh, access to high initiative pilots. Uh, that's uh, you get Duchess out of the Striker, you get Suntir out of the Interceptor, you got Grand out of the Inquisitor's Tie, and then if you want to put them all into a list, you could put uh, Merrick in the X one as well. So actually, you can run uh, four I fives uh, right off the bat, and then. As you kind of learn which, which chassis you want, you can dive into uh, filling out the squads, uh, replacing those ships with uh, TIE Fighters of different numbers. And I think this one might be the lowest count right now uh, at only 191.94, uh, even with the two core sets in there. Got some money for tax. Uh, I'm surprised you thought that two TIE Fighters additional was a better, within within the budgets that we got, was a better call than two Interceptors and a Defender. Because you get uh, the, the, X, the X-Wing is a the X-Wing is a, is a throwaway in this particular fashion. I know, but so you get two TIE Fighters that you already have two, and you miss out on two Interceptors with additional pilots, uh, Initiative 6 and Initiative 5, and Gideon has good initiative for Nash and uh, all these other goodies. I could, I could defender, see the value if if you're if you're not going to be playing at home, if you're going to go out to the game store uh, or um, a buddy's house who already plays X Wing. Yeah, you could probably skip the second core. I agree, um, but I'm I'm coming in from the mind that this is a, a brand new player. Uh, maybe maybe want to bust out some X-wing ships uh, around uh, the stockings, you know, under the Christmas tree. I think that's if if you're that person, I, I think you can go for the the second core. It's just so much value uh, for the Empire because they get two Tie Fighters uh, in that ship. So. I think I think the real reason is that Will Will really wanted to just do this, right? Just go and you know what? Just whatever budget, just forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. Uh, you know, you either got to go one, you go under the budget, or or you're breaking it. All right, mm -hmm, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, did you give your take on Empire? I don't think so, right? So mine, I think, was the exact same as I think Marcel's or yours, where it was Corset, Sky Strike, X One. Inquisitor, Tie, Interceptor, and Striker. But I would like to point out, and I think you, depending on if someone is interested in eventually looking at a Tie Swarm, that instead of the Striker, it may be worth getting the singular Tie Fighter pack. Because although Inferno Squadron all shows up in the core set, Howl Runner shows up in the single Tie Fighter pack. So if you want to have Howl Runner, you got to buy the single TIE Fighter pack. Now, obviously, someone just getting the game, if they don't view the TIE Swarm as like Empire to them and they're more interested in other ships, go Striker, go Variety. But if they think, man, I might try a TIE Swarm, then you may as well swap the Striker for, I think, a TIE, right, the, the base TIE Fighter pack to get Howl Runner, get the seeds planted for that potential. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, we got a few more factions to hit. Let's see. We haven't hit Scum, Resistance, or First Order. All right. Will, which one Ooh, Which I one got, do you want? I got a spicy Resistance. Oh, let's uh, hit that, it. Uh, that can actually hopefully hopefully get some variety up in here. Uh, because I... Not that I don't think that's bad. I think we're all coming to the, the same conclusions of like what really is the best way to go about it um with the the limited ships in second edition but what i'm actually including for the resistance here at a core as well just goes i don't know uh apparently I, I really like the core uh because it's it's all one product i think that's what have you seen that qu me. the quality on that box is great <sighs> yeah i mean i trust me if 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 i was individually shopping i would grab like the the deck and stuff like that but uh if you're buying this for someone or just want to give someone uh like an like an amazon wish list uh the course that's just the easiest way to do that so but 
In this faction, the resistance, I'm including the conversion kit. The resistance and first order have the cheaper conversion kits, uh, only $35.99. And the reason for it is that I want to fly the Millennium Falcon. So I'm even, I'm even reaching for that Rebel Falcon uh, in, in addition to that. Because to me, the resistance is Ray flying that Falcon around. Uh, that's just so uh, iconic to me for that faction that I would feel bad not including it. Uh, hey, so could you hey, could you actually you could do a two ship list then right you could just like a decked out if, if for for because you, you got them a core set they can go mm -hmm. some tricked out x wings tricked out luke skywalker this, and and han i guess right yeah this is another reason why i'm taking core set in in this faction because i i'm buying a rebel ship in addition to it so yeah you can have luke and han as a rebel squad in addition to uh your resistance so it's a little bit extra value there you're gonna it's going to limit your resistance ships but if you're on the fence though if you're like well i kind of like both when you're like i kind of like both you know x-wings and falcons uh this is a this is a good starting point i'm actually including i don't know why i went t70 rz2 t70 uh but uh, i guess because there do they have another small base ship Oh, the transport, don't they? Uh -huh. mm, no, I didn't reach for the transport. Uh, I reached for two X wings and an A wing. Uh, just because that's that's what reminds me um, about the resistance. Plus, I think those would be easier to fit in, uh, like a Falcon one X wing and an A wing, or a Falcon and two X wings would be uh, just easy list building essentially uh plus the uh, uh like i said the extra items you get out of the conversion kit uh could be useful as well so it ends up being 203 a little over budget um but you did did reach for a a, a better starting base if you will um because you can reach out for the uh there's another ship that you can't get in the resistance which without the conversion kit, which is the Star Fortress. So uh, it leaves you avenues to go that way as well. I like it. I, I like it. All right, Marcel, you're up. I know you're always reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you right, you uh, got we, the second faction. I didn't. I never skipped you. Why would I skip you? No, I didn't. I never picked. You, you picked got. It for you me. got. Well, I. I mean, come on. You would have done it. You would have done Re Republic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Maybe. Uh, so we're doing uh, resistance. Time? I wasn't even paying attention. There you go. Wow! 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 Calls me out. Doesn't even know. Uh, resistance. Yeah. Why isn't it showing up? It's there. Oh, are you wait, watching? Why are you watching on Twitch? I'm not watching on Twitch. Oh, I'm you're looking you're, at the spreadsheet. Gotcha, but it's because yeah. I added the gray thing. The gray, yeah. Part. That's why, yeah. All right, so I went with um, with the more expensive version of it, which is the dice pack third party. I, I liked William's idea on this one with the uh, conversion kit, so that was that was kind of cool. I didn't even think about it. So I went with the Heralds of Hope. So you get the two T70s and the A wing uh, in the Heralds of Hope, and then I think you definitely need that that additional RZ2 A wing. Uh, mostly because that's the ZZ pack. You just need to have ZZ. I don't think you can have a resistance without ZZ. And then and that means you need to buy the uh, Hot Shots and Aces pack. Then that's right. Yeah, you so do. Is that where ZZ is? That's where yep. ZZ comes from. Oh my God. Okay. Same with Fifth Brother and the Tie Inquisitor. We talked about. How much, about, how much uh, is that one? Let me see. Hot Shot. It's twenty three bucks actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah you, gotta, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get rid of that. <laughs> just drop the whole ship. Uh, yeah, just I'm put gonna the... drop the transport and get my hot shots in there. Cause ZZ is 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 boss, so you gotta have ZZ. So I went with you know what? Uh, one, two. Okay, so yeah. So as much as I like that transport, I don't. We're gonna drop it. 
So it, it it's actually probably the faction that has the least amount of ships now that I dropped it for the hotshots and aces reinforce uh, aces. But uh, it's got a lot of pilots, so you're gonna have the two T seventies, uh, two RZ two A wings, and a fireball and a whole lot of pilots. So that's only five ships available to you in this particular one. So not a lot of ships, but I think there's a lot of variations that you can do with those five ships. With um, you know, you can get uh, Kaz. Kaz is pretty good, and then you get uh, ZZ and probably Tally or something like that. Um, you get um, you don't get you get the bad po, but you know it, he's cheap now, so he's not as bad. He's He's, he he went from bad pull to affordable. His budget pull. So His budget pull. Yeah, you get you get you get yeah. He's he's at, he's at a good. Am I really at one eighty eight? Yeah. Yeah, the hot shots and aces is worth a small base. You could have kept like the transports. Oh, okay. Out, no, they, they, fireball yeah, for well, example. What we're gonna do? So we're gonna we're gonna do on the fly here. Um. So, what do do they have a medium base? No. No. Oh sad uh yeah oh well i guess you should actually we'll just we'll just get more dice then let's, let's throw some dice in there there you go get an extra extra <laughs> dice so you can get some yeah it's, all right closer to 200 that way you can throw some proton rockets in there and roll five dice uh but yeah just two two rzas two t70s and kaz the fireball um, you also get the two V19s in the in the uh, Heralds of Hope, so you've got uh, you, you've got a fair number of ships, I think. Um, honestly, th looking at this within the two hundred dollar budget, this is probably the one that I feel the least happy with. That I would like, I would get bored with these ships probably faster than than the other ones to this point so far. I think. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm so, I'm, I'm like meh about it. <laughs> well, let me see if I can sell you on my version. Ooh. Probably, because I'm not so <laughs> fond of that. Uh, <laughs> obstacle pack, third party templates, resistance damage dice pack, baseline. Uh, Heralds of Hope, squad pack, you get the one T70, you get the two A wings. Oh, no, it's two T70s and one A wing, right? Yeah. Because there's the green T70, the orange T70, and the. Yep. Okay. Um, and then we have, so you'll have 70s, one A wing. The Y wing pack, no one's put that on yet. We've got the Y wing pack, comes with two ships. Uh, y wings are a little cheaper than T70s. Two of them are good fillers. And then we got to round out as many other the pilot options as possible by throwing in the other RC2 A wing and another T70 X wing. So you have three T70s. Two A wings, two Y wings. You're gonna, you only have three types of chassis, but you have a lot of the pilots covered, and you have a solid amount of ships covered. Um, I would kind of so when we talked about the Hot Shots and Aces pack, that might be something that if you have a friend group and you're trying to get some multiple new players together. This is where everyone says, let's just spend, let's split it four ways, split it, split it three ways, and mitigate that cost by a lot and split up the pilots to whatever, whatever faction people are taking. You got some friend who's taken scum and resistance. You got someone who's taken uh, 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 empire and rebel or something. Like that. You know, however you need to split it up. Take those card packs of pilots, do a nice even split for everyone, make everyone happy. Lower the cost of that yourself. Make it minimal so that it's just a blip on this radar. I like it. I like it. For myself, I had I had even just another another variation on the theme here. Um, we head over to there we go. So for my for my resistance here, we went the not the not corset pack. Um, we went with the Heralds of Hope. You got yourself two T-70s, a separate T-70X wing as well. I went for hot shots and aces right away, and then I went for the resistance transport as well, giving us 200 points. The resistance transport gives you two ships in one, 
kind of um right depending i would say in most casual settings you can go ahead and, and use the seahorse configuration or just play the transport without the pod attached you'll be fine um but right there, you end up getting three, four, five total ships in that. And here, I, I will. Originally, I went with Ray. I was I was building there. I was building oh, there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I was kind of poking through, and I was like, oh man, Will, will went the Ray, with the Ray. Let me try to make some some other choices here. And this is kind of where I went with. I was like, all right, how do I get Leia, the Resistance Leia, in the list? So available for somebody to use with a support chip, and you got to go with uh, with the pod for that. And of course, I was like, "Wait, Finn and Rose, like those? That is the resistance, Finn and Rose." So I had to include those those pods. So this was my only one that was actually on the budget, two hundred dollars nineteen cents, right there. All right, we have a uh, scum. And first order, Ryan, uh, or or even hold on. Let me let me let me let me not hurt Marcel's feeling. Marcel's pick. Marcel, pick one. I don't know. That, you you didn't say it nice enough. I, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> let me talk to your manager. <laughs> Which right, one do you want? First order. Yeah. First order. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna do. Let me know when you're on there. And that works. There Go you for be. It. All right. Actually, this one's right on the budget too. At two hundred dollars. Uh, so I went with the obstacle pack, templates, damage deck, dice pack, etc. So for the actual um, ships, did I? I don't think I took any any like discount ones, right? Because some of the other ones have like three for the price of two type of packs or three for a discount price. So this was all straightforward ships. It was a TIE silencer to get Kylo in there. It was a TIE FO because, um, you know, you can get a bunch of different ships with TIE FO, uh, Midnight and a couple other ones. The so TIE SF, so you can get quick draw. Uh, I think did we? it's very likely we all went with the same ships unless somebody went uh, with the, uh, with, with like the big bases. Uh, the medium or big basis, but yeah, so basically a silencer, a uh, tie FO, an SF, uh, major von regs, uh, tie interceptor, one of the new SE bombers, and uh, tie whisper, just very straightforward. Basically, one of each of the small base ships, and um, yeah, pretty straightforward. I don't think there's 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 a whole lot of science behind this one. So just if it's a, if it's a small base ship. Get it? If it's a medium or a large base ship, don't get it. And what's up, Brian? <laughs> Brian I have I think a question about your question. science. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the TIE SC Bomber and the TIE Whisper only come in the Fury of the First Order pack. You can't get them individually. Oh, that's because uh, Dion didn't have the thing on there, so I just assumed they were the same price. Uh, so what, what is it? The, uh, you, I fixed the document. You can you can go okay, ahead. Okay, so and... what is it called? It's called Fury. Fury, Fury of yeah. the First Order. Okay, so yeah, Fury of the so First just, Order. So take your and then of drop the two. other two. All right, so it's only a couple more bucks. You're yeah. you're fine. So the, there you go. It's only two dollars more. Um, but but then you get two bombers, right? Yeah, you do get a whole a whole second bomber. Oh well, there you go. It got even better. So yeah, so two bombers, a whisper, the Von Rex tie interceptor, SF, FO, and a silencer. Pretty straightforward. Um, and I think like the Thai, no, like like the Empire, I think the Empire and the First Order are pretty straight for me, for my style of play, and for what I would recommend people to buy. Um, I think those are the two most straightforward factions that that you could recommend. What are you doing, Dion? I'm sh people are asking questions and I'm just answering questions. You just like holding those. It's like it's like uh, what's what's the dragon's name at the uh, under the mountain? So yeah, he's like smog over there. He's gonna he's gonna bathe in those, throw them in the in the uh, in the bathtub and swim in dice. For, for for the audio only audience, Dion is playing with all of his special. Uh, dice that he has for X-Wing uh, 
organized play. But so to Marcel, to keep it simple, uh, you, I have the exact same thing you do. It's just standard setup for non-core uh, set things, obstacle third party, first order dice, silencer, SF, FO, major von reg, fury of the first order. Cut, easy, done. Cool. Will? Uh, ooh, I don't know how much, mine, much more different mine is. Uh, so... I have, once again, reached for the core. Um, it's just being on brand, apparently. I've got the uh, Major Von Rug, Silencer, Foe, SF, and Fury, and I went over budget by reaching for the Fully Loaded Devices pack. I want to trick out those bombers with all of the different tools so we're getting extra proxy mines uh that way we can make sure we can uh what because what proxy mines and counter nets are in fully loaded and that's the two main ones out uh no cluster mines that's what i think it is is cluster mines only in the uh the obstacles pack now I'm that, forgetting what's in the that, Fury of the First Order pack. That sounds right. I can, I, I literally have the packing list for that. No, I threw it <laughs> off my desk when I was setting up uh, the top cluster, down camera. No, cluster mines only available on the fully loaded. Uh, you can get proxy mines uh, in the, uh, no, you can't even get proxy mines in the Fury of the First Order. What are they, what are they trying to sell you here? But anyways, so I, yeah, I wanted to make sure I can get some bombs uh, for those. So I went a little bit over budget, but I think the, the value you're going to get out of that uh, fully loaded devices pack with the Fury of the First Order um, is worth it. For myself, I think the only difference that I, that I have here is I did not take a tie FO. I didn't, I didn't do it. Instead, instead, I did, I did go with the, the fully loaded specifically because of the Fury of the First Order. Uh, I went Silencer, SF, and Major Von Rex tie. Um, I, I just, it's such an interesting ship design. Uh, it's very, it flies very different than all these other ones. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted just to have that as an option there as a high initiative uh, ship. Not having tie FOs, um, I, it felt a little weird. But at the same time, it's like, well, most of the time we're seeing tie FOs, you have a, a Psy shuttle. And since that wasn't in my list, that's the only reason why I didn't reach for those uh, tie FOs. Um, additionally, man, I, I, this was, I had trouble with this one. Cause I was like, man, how could you build FO without giving this person access to Tavson? Like one of, one of the best pieces for FO. Um, but it is what it is. This is the restrictions in which we are living in. Uh, though you can survive without it. I do think Tavson is, is if you are getting serious in the first order, you know, Start experimenting by maybe proxying with a large base if you can get your hands on one. And then when you realize you like it, try to find one. They, I have seen a lot of them in game stores that have gone unsold. Those mostly because people really only needed one. And uh, after that, you got to try to track down the, the cards and all that. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that is our first order breakdown and last but certainly not least we got scum and ryan's gonna gonna start he's gonna lead the trail here all right so uh third fourth fifth i don't know obstacle pack third party scum and villain damage deck dice pack baseline for my stuff uh so i went with the fugitives and collaborators uh that is the hawk and two y wings um I just like the value you get out of the squad packs. I know we're not seeing a lot of Y-Wing right now, but the Hawk pilots are pretty good. They're very good. That that Kanan Hawk, the Gamut Key crew. You get the Zam crew if you want to use it for your scum ships and any of your lists. You don't want to have to buy a, a Django Fett Slave 1. 
Um, then we got to start including some of the originals, the OGs of the Scum Faction for the second edition. We got the Fang Fighter. We do have the Slave One for Boba. And then it was Small Ship to Taste at the end. Or you could get pick up that Hot Shots and Aces pack, but there really is no ship, I think, that I have right here that takes advantage of that right away, but it's more of a future pickup. But I think for now, I just stuck with the M3A Interceptor as it's more of a scum small ship to me than the Z95. Will? Yeah, let me, let me jump in. I have uh, <laughs> almost the identical uh, thing. He gets uh, the what you need to begin with. Uh, then I think the first two purchases got to be that fire spray and a fang fighter. The uh, like Fenbrown, Old Terrock, and um, the fire spray like Boba Fett, right? Like that's like these Mandalorians are what I think is like super iconic in Scum. So then it's just. Uh, the and then the fugitives and collaborators. I mean, a hawk, uh, right off the bat, plus the value you get. And then, uh, do you only got to move the screen over just a little bit? <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah, so yeah, ha sh uh, definitely buy the Fang and Slave one first, get the fugitives and collaborators because it's just so uh, much value. Plus, you get your bombs and additional things for your fire spray. And then I actually reached for a uh, second fang, uh, two fangs, and uh, a slave one. You got two fangs, a hawk, and a Y-wing. Also will fit out then in that same um, kind of configuration. So I think that is super valuable uh, to make sure that uh, you can get a second AC shift. Oh, uh, I, just, I think I just like flying two fangs together, like both diving in on the same target. Uh, so I, I rarely fly a single fang fighter. So I remembered something just now when William was speaking, is that the fugitives and collaborators come with y-wings so i had to do a quick delete and reshuffle so that's why my we're well, gonna see it all 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 over the place so after that quick delete and reshuffle i ended up with the uh, second edition core set because that's uh, another way to save money uh those ships i guess are just going on the you know uh, decoration pieces that were on the desk uh, the Fang Fighter, I think that's probably one of the most fun ships. Uh, so is the Houndstooth. Is the Houndstooth really sixty bucks? Well, you get a Z ninety five with it. Z ninety five in there though too. I don't know okay. if it comes with all the Z ninety five pilots. No, it's just, it's just Bosk and the Nashta Pup, I think. Yeah, so I mean, you you have a ship if you end up buying a Z ninety five, you can fly two of them, so it gives you at least the the ship for it. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, one with the Fang Fighter, the Houndstooth. Uh, the uh, punishing one and the slave one fire spray. So one medium, one small, one medium, and two large base ships. Um, no autopilot. Get your pitch for that is an autopilot. Uh, oh wait, where did it go? Millennial Fox. You know what? Yeah. How much is? What's the difference? Between, I was about to say he he didn't put in um, his Lando's Falcon. Where is the Falcon? Millennium? No, it's not Millennium. Lando's. There you go. Now I'm. Yeah, I can even do something more here. So we're gonna do. Uh, let us do an extra dice pack. There you go. Now I'm at two hundred dollars. Good call. So yeah. So we, we're switching it up here. So one tank fighter, a slave one. So basically, what you get is you get initiative six, initiative six, initiative six. So you can fly three initiative sixes with Dengar, Han, and. Um, Fen Rao, and then you also get another high initiative ship right here with uh, with um, what's his name, Boba Fett, and yeah, even though I do I do like the Slave One though. I, I think right now, honestly, I mean, all kidding aside, I probably would still go with the Slave One above 
the Lando's Millennium Falcon right now. I think the Slave One just has more stuff to play with. And not only does it, it's easier for newer players, it has more stuff to play with. It has a 180 arc with three dice that are native. And then um, outside of Bosk, you know, which can be brutal, I, th you know, Morale Evalo or uh, Moralo Evalo. Yeah, he's just such a fun ship to play with on a casual environment. Um, just to being able to like peekaboo in and, and, and play kind of like whack-a-mole with. It gives you like that whack-a-mole feel where like, oh, I'm here, now I'm there, now I'm there, now I'm there, just bouncing all over the place. Um, I would probably still go with, with that over the Lando's Millennium Falcon. Um, did any of you pick the, the slave one? You're talking the, the oh, hound's tooth? Good call. Yeah. It, Are you talking about the slave one or hound's tooth? No, no, no. The, the hound's tooth. Yeah. The, the Bosk. No, oh, I, I will yeah, say in, 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 in my list, because the fugitives and collaborators, fugitives yeah. and collaborators and hound's tooth are the same cost. If you preferred that, then you can take the small ship in my list, turn it from an, from an M3A interceptor into a Z95. Though we have two Z95 models, you have. Bosk, Nash to Pup, and all the pilots to go with it if you wanted to mm -hmm. do that. I I also completely forgot about the mining guild tie. If you want to if you want a Sevor, mm, that's, that's a good small good value. piece as well. That's that's good value. It, isn't it crazy though? You can't buy the Galaxy uh Galaxy's runner up list though? Like it's just not available. <laughs> it's like <laughs> did you not first edition? I'm sorry, you cannot. <laughs> Oh, anyway, this has not been re-released. No, no, there's a lot of scum oh, wow. ships that haven't been re-released. Yeah. All right. Well, Will, let's go ahead. Let's pass it on to you. I already talked about mine right after Ryan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I reached for bad. the second fang. What did you do? The second Fiona? fang. All right. So for me, I went a little crazy. Went a little, got a little weird. All right. Um, and that's because I, I wanted the slave one and the punishing one. I wanted to make, make sure I got both of them. Um, I, like, I think those are two, two shit ones iconic just because right. Boba Fett and the punishing one has been one of those ships that has been, uh, really, really good in uh in second edition as of late right dengar can do some work and even though we don't have access to nam lam that's a really easy addition with a card pack to be able to get that those are two really important pieces um you have to have a fang fighter i think i wanted two i wanted two but i couldn't fit it and fugitives and collaborators um is there for the hawks and for the additional upgrade cards um this was another one where i i debate i flip flop for a long time on trying to get this person a conversion kit if they could find a conversion kit on sale somewhere grab it so that you can get copies of fearless um and just the other kind of scum uh the the crew there's so many scum crew and gunners that have crazy effects i really wanted that um i will tell you the best deal i have ever found on a upgrade of a, a conversion kit is two dollars at barnes and noble they were just clearing them out and i bought like 20 of them i have a stack they're in my basement it's just when when it, when the time comes when, when, for 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 whatever reason i lose something uh, somebody really needs it i'm just like i got you <laughs> i got i got it what do you need all right uh but i couldn't i couldn't pass that up we were we were in barnes and noble i did i wasn't even there shopping for x-wing we were there getting something completely different and devin's like this x-wing stuff on sale like oh usually i don't need any more ships and i saw the conversion kits and my eyes went oh my god gotta buy it um all right so there is uh there is our buying guide for anybody who's just trying to jump into the game. Two hundred dollar ish budget. Two hundred. The thumbnail will say two hundred dollars, and then we'll make people angry. But it's okay. That's uh, that's. I think is, is is I think Dion was the most ish on that two hundred. <laughs> I was. I I pushed the budget almost every time. I think where where was was I? I was under on Republic, under on Republic, and I was over every other time strong <laughs> now let's go ahead and um before before we end for the night 
I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that are happening this week. Okay, so um, I can't talk about it, but I'm making an announcement on Wednesday. Announcement coming Wednesday, and then Saturday doing stuff related to said announcement. That's all I will say. I don't know if things have been said by other parties. All I'm saying is I'm talking about stuff on Wednesday because that was the agreed upon date to talk about things. Um, as for like December plans, um, I will tell you that there are no GSP events um, like our big tournament type of events happening in at the end of the year taking a break right now from those type of events um look for something in the beginning of the year but i will not announce that stuff until all the shipping is done for galaxies 2021 that's one one very important thing for me is to make sure that all the shipping is done before we move on to the next thing uh because we got lots lots of stuff um, yeah, um, for the next upcoming podcast, we'll probably be taking a look at, uh, now that we have some time to, to practice, you know, uh, the random order after dials and all that, just being able to have a, a wider perspective on it, maybe start talking a little bit about strategy, maybe talking a little bit about list building. And we also want to take a look at your lists. We want to take a look at your lists. What is it that, you know, what has this, um, what has how has your list building changed from that we really want to see people talking about that on our discord because uh, i think that's something i want to explore next week on our podcast as well as other things that are part of our announcements this week so that's all i have you guys anything anything else you guys want to bring up talk about just say randomly weird sounds i mean i it really is up to you no nah? okay her name is Leia. Oh, you have Marcel has a cat now. I have a, I have a, a baby kitty, but uh, she doesn't answer to Leia. She only answers to Mimi for some reason. Well, that's because that's. I didn't you say that Kayla like just called her Mimi a bunch right when you got her, and now the well, the name doesn't work. Yeah, because she calls her Mimi as she's giving her treats, so she associates Mimi with treats. So whenever she hears Mimi, she's like, "Oh, that's food." So yeah, got it. But um, strong all that stuff. And, oh, and Empire is good. Empire is fun. <laughs> all right. So it just it just seems like what has been established now is that this is Team Dog, and this is Team Cat. Even even though Will's like, no, nah, I'm actually Team Dog, and Dion, you have a hamster. I understand Will's stance on my dog not quite <laughs> being a dog because she's really it's small. A little, little, little bit better than a hamster, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> don't be don't be hating on the cage animals, but... yeah. Anyway, anyway, we're not taking an official poll, uh, but we, we can we can we can we can fight about this later. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, be smart and be safe. Gold Squadron, out.